This Bill 99, where they forbid conversion therapy, they called it, I think that's the right term. So in other words, this is forbidden, where you try to preach against homosexuality toward a person. So if this is within, so I'm not saying that this is uh, referring to a public context where you're preaching on a pulpit. So it's probably more toward an individual licensed counseling session. But I could be wrong about that too. But the point is, is that trying to get a person to get rid of homosexuality within this Bill 99, what's so scary is that Senate approved of this. Now here's the thing, is that the reason why this is so scary is that basically all you need is two things. Despite of the land of the free and the home of the brave, it does not work when you do this power play. All you need is a Senate and a president, and then it's game over. Now I thought that this would not happen with the Senate. You know, a president's one thing I can think that's possible, especially if Hillary became president. And some of you have heard how she tried to filter out uh, or censor sermons, I think, at the state of Texas. So it was only by God's grace and mercy we didn't get Hillary Clinton. But anyway, the thing is, is that I didn't think that I'd see this day concerning the Senate. But you got to realize this, is that if Democrats can take control over the Senate as well as presidency, then it's pretty much shot. So this is why this is very scary right here. So then they approved of this, so then the president will have to have the final say right here. Now, what this is, is that we're going to look at Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Now, you got to understand this, is that when you vote in for president, like Obama, for example, you notice that when they run for presidency, they're not going to say something like, I'm going to imprison Christians. No, then they're going to lose their vote, obviously. How you get a world deceived where you eventually persecute and imprison Christians is that you pretend you're a Christian yourself. And then you say, I personally received Jesus Christ as my savior. Yeah, my foot, Obama. My foot. I don't believe you for a second. Amen. So you got to realize this. Bush said that too. A lot of presidents say that too. Now, I'm not saying that they have not done that. Only the Lord, only God knows between them and their heart what they really did. But you got to realize this, is that these kind of people who run for presidents will lie about being a Christian so that they can get your vote. And once they get your vote, then watch out when hell breaks loose. Amen. Amen. Do you know how the Antichrist persecutes and imprisons Christians? He has to work peaceably first by saying, I'm a Christian like you. I personally receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That's what the Antichrist will do. He has to deceive you first. That he's on your side. And once he gets in office, then that's when hell's going to break loose. Look at Daniel chapter 11. Look at verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person. That's the Antichrist. Whom to, uh, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in what? Peaceably. See? And obtain the kingdom. I'm going to win the vote and the presidency by what? Flatteries. Look at that. But look at this. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the what? Covenant. You ever heard these promises and covenances, covenants that these politicians make? I promise, I promise, I make a covenant with you. Blah, 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 blah. Nothing surprises me. Look at verse 23. And after the league made with him, he shall work what? Deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with the small people. He shall enter what? Peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the province. So notice right here that he's going to conquer the world. By conquering the world, he does it through peace. In Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 through 24, the Antichrist, he will do this through peace. It is always done with peace and promise. That's how they do it to begin with. 
And that's the scary thing about this scary world. Now let's look at Revelation chapter 13, please. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 13. Here's another thing that I'm going to tell you, which is pretty interesting to me. What you've got to understand is that people, when they voted for Trump, think about this. How did Trump became president? Now, I know that, you know, we can go into concerning about elites and conspiracies, etc. But let's forget all of that for now. Let's look at a public world viewpoint. The public world viewpoint, what they argue how Trump became president is because they were angry. That's why new parties came out within uh, the Republican side, such as uh, the, more of the Independence Tea Party, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Why? Because of Obama. So, so a, lot, a lot of the people who were doing the statistics on, they were questioning how he became president is because of a lot of anger and frustration. Not only that, you got to realize this, it's not just anger but also the information that's spreading all over on the web. What really killed it for Hillary uh, concerning a public world viewpoint was because of her uh, sneaky little things concerning her contacts, her emails, and etc. This is why what happened after that, that Facebook, YouTube, and all social media start to crack down on what they call fake news. That's what they like to call it. Now, what's really funny is that the, news, the mainstream media, news media themselves, you'd be surprised how much of them is fake news themselves anyways. But let's skip all of this, okay? Even if I'm going to, look, I don't deny online, you're going to see uh, whether you believe it or not, not all conspiracies are true. So I'm going to be fair. Yes, there is fake news out there too, okay? But guess what? That doesn't, uh, that doesn't, uh, what was I about to say? That doesn't make the mainstream media scot-free either. What? So then just because you see news online that is fake, this makes CNN must be true? This makes uh, all these other liberal news media must be true? No, this is an undoubtable fact. Any news information out there, you're going to find something fake. Okay? Sorry. Boo-hoo. So the thing is this, is that because of these two points right here, this is very scary. As we get to next, uh, as we come to the next coming years concerning on elections, what do you think these Democrats and liberals are doing? I'll tell you one thing. They're more angry. <laughs> They're more angry than us. Because... We can behave ourselves. The liberals and Democrats, they go nuts. San Francisco, as soon as Trump became president, you know what the women did? Trump does not respect women's body while they're wearing costumes of women's sex organs. What hypocrisy. What in the world, man? What in the world? Now, the funny thing is this, is that because of their anger and because these people were very infamous with some minorities and other people moving to different states and then uh, casting in their votes, stuff like that. Because of this uh, messed up thing going on with their anger, what do you think is going to happen with next year's presidency? And what do you think is going to happen concerning the Senate and the House? What do you think is going to happen with their anger? Not only that, you don't have this kind of information anywhere going free anymore. Uh, we've heard about Alex Jones being kicked out and then a lot of other stuff being censored and kicked out. So what happens with this kind of information where people aren't notified anymore? What are you going to do? With this one gone, and a lot of onliners, they became saved. Uh, they discovered the truth because of information online, right? Because of that freedom putting out information. But when this is censored, and not only that, when these people are angry, that's a horrible combination. And then what I can predict right here is that if all you need is a presidency and a Senate, then it's game over. By the way, I don't know if you're familiar who pushed this bill. It's some so-and-so blankety-blank here at the city of San Jose. So our church is pretty much in trouble, you got to understand. 
So the thing is this, is that this is uh, where we're heading toward, and it has to happen because it's fulfilling prophecy. That's what the Bible says. So look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. That's what's going to happen. Notice the Antichrist was peace first, right? So peace, peace, promise, promise. Then all of a sudden his tongue spoke what? Blasphemy. That's a typical politician, government leader. Peace, promise, promise. Once they're in power, and the Bible says the Antichrist is in power at verse 5. Once he's in power, blasphemy comes out. These hate speech people, hate mongers, fundamentalists. You hear this term often? It's enough to make you sick. It's enough to make you sick. Now what's even more dangerous is that they are saying this is a typical King James only fundamentalist group of people. That's what they're doing now. And we're King James only people. So this is becoming even more dangerous. So Satan has raised up wicked champions in his day and age to mess up the King James only crowd with this heretical, weird, cultic fringe that they like to call themselves New IFB. It is so wicked, it is so messed up that Satan has used these people to pave the way where these people now have got an excuse. The day is coming. Look at verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Notice right here that he conquers and he persecutes and he wars against the saints. That's the job. They're going to imprison God's people. So this is the end times where we're heading toward. And this is what I'm predicting right here on how scary and how close we are to the edge. And the Lord has his reasons why our church is here in San Jose. Only his mind is the awesome mind of God on why we are here and why we're uh, ironically reaching people all over the world when this is the place that's trying to censor information all over the world. The Lord has his way of playing games, you know, rubbing dirt at the devil's system. But uh, that's the reason why I stress so many times your testimony as a Christian is so important. That's why keep street preaching alive, keep visitation alive, keep the right spirit alive as you proclaim Bible-believing truth, show your love to other people, be a good testimony to this world on what a real Bible-believing Christian is, and maybe your ministry will still be alive like how the Lord is using ours. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves because Jesus said, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolves. If you don't act like that, then one day the devil's going to get you. If you want to play in the devil's playground, we're in the devil's playground. He's not going to go by your terms how you play. Remember that. If you want to win against him, you're going to have to play. You're going to have to play and mess with the devil's playground yourself. You're going to have to know the rules and the system, and then you're going to have to be that serpent because he is a serpent himself. That's why Jesus said, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. That's the only reason why the Lord is using our ministry Amen. for now. For now. One day, pretty soon, you're going to be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and you're going to have to make your decision.